Hey guys, how's it going? Today let's play a first person game called The Stanley Parable, which was released back in 2011, I think programmed by a single developer. Um, and this is kind of an indie game, and it's uh, got a very, um, I don't know what to really call this game, it's kind of like a puzzle slash, uh, I don't know really what, what this game is, simulation maybe? Anyways, this game is very interesting because there's several different ways you can play this game. And uh, I'll just show you guys one of the ways you can play it. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on the keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day, every month, of every year. And although others might have considered it soul-winding, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour, when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened, this complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. So yeah, as you guys can see, I am a person named Stanley, and I guess I was some kind of robot, just pressing keys on the computer. But in this game, it is a first-person game, but it's not a first-person shooter game, because there are no enemies in this game, um, or other people for that matter. Basically, I'm just this person, and... Uh, the goal of this game actually is to give you the freedom of choice, I think. And there is a narrator in this, but as you can see, you can follow the narrator. All workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. So you can choose to follow what the narrator says. The narrator attempts to narrate what you're going to do, and you can choose to follow him, or you... No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. Yep, so you can either choose to follow him or you can choose your own path and that's really the freedom of this game is that you can choose to do what you want. You can follow the narrator and uh, go to that ending or you can um, choose your own ending basically and there's like so many different endings you can choose. I think like 16 or something. Anyways, probably more actually. I think, I'm not really sure how many endings this game has but there's a lot of them. I'm just going to show you guys one playthrough and one ending of this game. So I'm just going to follow the narrator. So you come to a fork in the road, like here. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. So you can enter the door on the left, or you can like ignore the narrator and go to the right. So I'm going to go to the left, and that will lead to a different ending if you go to the right. Or open up a new set of uh, endings. Yet, there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided now. to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Get Chris out of the broom closet. Fire paper guy. Fire paper synergizing guy. Okay. Weird. Profits. What do people want? Things. Money. More money. <laughs> work harder, hard worker. It's pretty good uh, attention to detail here. <laughs> St 
Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here, so he turned around and got back on track. Yep, so the narrator attempts to put you back on track. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Okay, let's walk upstairs to my boss's office. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this. What dark secret was being held from him? What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth that his boss had been keeping from him. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number. 2845. But of course, Stanley could not yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Thanks, Stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck. Amazing. He stepped into the newly opened passageway. Descending deeper into the building, Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more free to think for himself, to question the nature of his job. Why did he feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him? This question would not go unanswered for long. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold, Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? Now the monitors jumped to life, their true nature revealed. Each bore the number of an employee in the building, Stanley's co-workers. Lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen, and Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe it couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? No, he refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never! It was unthinkable, wasn't it? Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? But here was the proof, the heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions, happy or sad or content, walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he would dismantle the controls once and for all. Okay, let's do it. Blackness and a rising chill of uncertainty. Was it over? Yes! He had won! 
He had defeated the machine, unshackled himself from someone else's command. Freedom was mere moments away. And yet, even as the immense door slowly opened, Stanley reflected on how many puzzles still lay unsolved. Where had his co-workers gone? How had he been freed from the machine's grasp? What other mysteries did this strange building hold? But as sunlight streamed into the chamber, he realized none of this mattered to him, for it was not knowledge or even power that he had been seeking, but happiness. Perhaps his goal had not been to understand, but to let go. No longer would anyone tell him where to go, what to do, or how to feel. Whatever life he lives, it will be his. And that was all he needed to know. It was, perhaps, the only thing worth knowing. Stanley stepped through the open door. Stanley felt the cool breeze upon his skin, the feeling of liberation, the immense possibility of the new path before him. This was exactly the way, right now, that things were meant to happen. And Stanley was happy. And uh, yeah, that's the end of the game. No, really, it is. Uh, I know it seems like a short game, but actually, there's like many other uh, playthroughs you can do. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps yeah. he had so, missed a memo. This time, you can choose not to follow the narrator. You can choose to go different paths, and there are a, a bunch of different endings you can discover. But uh, basically, this game is pretty interesting and unique because it it's non-linear. It makes you make different decisions and uh, the consequences are different for each time. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace and, of his um, co-workers. Basically, yeah, this, it's unique because it's a first person shooter without any guns and without any enemies, really. It just makes you uh, make some decisions and uh, I think it has a lot bigger meaning in this Stanley game. Stanley went around touching every little thing in the sure. office but it didn't make a single difference, nor did it advance the story yeah. in any way. Yeah, and the narrator constantly te teases you all the time and mocks you. But uh, yeah, this is a pretty interesting game, and uh, you can basically do several playthroughs of it, and you can find it on Steam, so I'm playing it on Steam right now. And that's it, that's the Stanley Parable. Very, very unique game. And thanks for watching, and subscribe if you haven't. Watch some of my other videos if you have not. That's it. See you guys next time. Stanley Parable from 2011. Uh, you can basically do several playthroughs of it, and you can find it on Steam, so I'm playing it on Steam right now. And that's it. That's the Stanley Parable. Very, very unique game. And thanks for watching, and subscribe if you haven't. Watch some of my other videos if you have not. That's it. See you guys next time. Stanley Parable from 2011.